Hello and welcome to lesson one of your C++ tutorials or lessons. Um, basically today we're going to get set up your um, programming environment and we're going to do a simple hello world application. Okay so firstly you're going to need a compiler. I use Visual C++ 2008 Express Edition. Uh, you can just google this, you'll probably get to this page, click download, you know, follow the installation etc. Uh, and then just open that up with your desktop and you get something like this. Um, well, you won't. You'll get something without this little box. Um, just press this little button here to create a new project and type in the name for your project. So ours is just going to be called Hello World Application. Make sure it's a console application. And then click OK. OK, it's just going to come up with this, just next. And then we don't want any pre-compiled headers, so untick that. Uh, that's all correct. Finish. OK, and it comes up with this. Forget this, this is useless. You don't need that. OK, so this is pretty much where you'll be doing most of your programming. And something that looks a bit like this. Uh, and you can debug it by clicking this little green arrow. At the moment, if we debug it, there's no code. You know, it isn't going to do anything. There you go. It's coming up with errors because it doesn't have a clue what to do. Um, and then what we can also do is change it from debug when well when you finish doing all your programming or whatever, and you want to sort of distribute it, you can't actually give it to people in debug mode because when you click debug, it actually generates an executable .exe file, and it opens it up for you and goes okay, ta-da. But this is in debug mode. We can change it to release mode and then it will generate a release exe which you can then distribute anyway we'll go more into that when we're finished coding different things okay so first of all we have to basically include a file so that we can do certain output things so you do this you do a hash and then write include open triangular brackets io stream and that stands for input output stream so we can do simple input output operations Okay, so our next line is using namespace std. And this just sets the namespace, which is just sort of in the things we'll be doing, to standard std. Okay, uh, just to tell you, I do go over this in much more detail in the text tutorial, so please take a look at that. I'm sort of rushed for time in this one. Okay, so using namespace standard. And then we can start our main function. So this is where all the programming and things goes. So int, so it's an integer, a whole number, main. So because it's a whole number, it has to return a whole number. We'll come to that in a sec. So then you open and close brackets, and just open a curly bracket, and then close a curly bracket. And this is pretty much, if we run this now, nothing's going to happen. I'll just show you that. There you go, it just pops up with the back screen and then it closes. Because uh, we've, include, we've included the stuff we need. We don't really need to do this at the moment because we're not using anything from it, but we will be in a sec. We've said we're going to use standard, and then the program goes, okay, because the, well, yeah, it goes, okay, let's do the stuff in int main. Because the program automatically goes, all right, we need to find int main. Where's int main? Here we go, here's int main, let's start int main. Okay, so for our Hello Word application, we're going to need to output text onto the screen. To use this, to do this, sorry, we can use C out. It looks like out, you know, C out. And then you do C out, and then you don't just type in hello world, something like that. You actually do these two arrows, two open triangular brackets. And this is called the incitation operator. This basically means, okay, C out, and then we're going to tell you what, and then we can do. And we can insert variables and all other th sorts of things, which I'll show you in later lessons. So, and then you just open, um, you know, quotation marks, and then write "hello world." And then we could stop there if we wanted, but let's just be neat and do that. So, what that does is C out incitation operators, "hello world" incitation operators end at line, that's what this stands for, end line and then we just do a semicolon to show, okay we've finished the C out, that's all done 
Uh, we could run this now, it would pop up with hello world for a second and then it closed. So let's just tell it to pause. Now, pausing, it's a bit of an issue really. Um, we're going to use system pause. Now the thing is, this uses system resources and, you know, it's not really that good. Well, it's it's good. It does what it's supposed to do. It looks a bit ugly because it goes press any key to continue and all of that. So we could do this now. It's going to come up with what we want. Hello world, press any key to continue. And then if you do press any key, it closes. Um, well, this isn't right at the moment. This shouldn't really be right um, to standards because it's an integer main, so it should return an integer. It doesn't make sense without it returning anything. Otherwise, it'd have to be a void, which means it doesn't return a value. I will go more into this in later lessons as well. Um, so all you have to do is type return and then zero. Because zero basically is to symbolize, okay, everything's fine. Zero, it just exited correctly. And zero is an int or an integer. So then this is more to standards. There we go. It does the same thing, it's just better. And it's just what you should do. Now, system pause, it's actually better to use get ch, or get ch, as people call it. But you know, it's really get character ch. But to do this, we need another include. And that works even better, it just says hello world, and then you can press a key and it closes. So that's a bit complicated, you know, with other headers and stuff. But get ch or get ch is or get character is a lot easier to use and it's probably better. Although in a lot of our applications we're probably going to be using system pools just because you don't need another header file and it's kind of easy to use. Um okay, so let's just go through this one more time. We have our includes. So include iostream.h, which is what it's really doing, which is a C file. You know, it comes with C. And then conio.h, it's just another header file. And then we say use the namespace standard, so just do standard stuff. And then sort the integer main, which is just our main sort of thing, it's where all the programming that you want to really happen goes. And then see out or count hello world end line get a character. We don't care what the character is. We're not going to do anything with the character. Just get a character and then return return zero in fact. And we're returning zero because it's an int or an integer function. As I said, I cover this a hell of a lot more in the text tutorial. And if you're a bit confused, just play around with it. And you know, in future videos and in other text lessons I do go into this stuff a lot more okay uh, that's pretty much the end of this lesson have a nice day